Howdy folks, it is Diecast Buffet here again. Today we have a Diecast haul in the studio. I know I have not uploaded in a while. Been working on a brand new studio setup. We got this big old Diecast box here. We'll be opening up in the studio. So without further ado, make sure to give the video a huge thumbs up. And let's go and hop right into it. Alrighty folks, so here we go. We got a big old box in our brand new studio. Oh boy, uh, trying to make sure the camera doesn't uh, you know, vibrate as I talk. I'm getting a new tripod, so we're working on that. Like I said, this is a completely fluid studio we're working on here. Anyways, we got a big box of brand new die cast, and we're going to go ahead and carefully uh, open it up here in the studio. How are y'all doing? Hope you're having a jolly good time. Let's carefully open up this box. This thing is a absolute uh, work in progress, so to speak. And uh, we're still working on it. Let me go ahead and get that. There we go. And we set that over to the side. Or actually, no, we take that out of the area so we don't hurt ourselves. And let's go ahead and dive into this die cast unboxing. Get the paperwork out of the way. And here we go. <laughs> oh boy, look at that. We got a whole bunch of. Uh, packing peanuts in here, guys. This is gonna be fun. How y'all doing out there? Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I'm not gonna dirty up the brand new studio, so we're gonna try to keep it a little clean. Uh, I, I did a video uh, with the other studio, and let me tell you, it uh, it was not uh, big enough for the diecast review gang because you know over here in diecast buffet we gotta do it big and here we go we got a brand new diecast mold here in the studio let me get my lighting correct uh, i apologize the camera kind of bounces uh, again we're gonna be working on that as we go check this out guys brand new late model mold holy cow this has been one of the coolest freaking things in a long time in the diecast universe. And you know what this really reminds me of? This reminds me so much of the late 1990s when they would do Jeff Gordon dirt cars or Tony Stewart dirt cars. They did a bunch of random things. I can't remember the last time we started, we seen late models being made. Uh, this is a blast from the past, but no, this is actually a 2023 Mom and Pops, it's a store or something, late model uh die kiss now officially it's called just late model camaro uh i believe the tooling for it is a chevy camaro but i almost guarantee you people are going to be making some different uh manufactured pieces with these this is one of the hottest i'm talking the hottest die cast uh on the market right now is these brand new late model die kiss they're going crazy yo and uh, we're going to keep digging here in the box. Oh, you bet we're going to be doing a diecast review on that, fellas. Stay tuned for that. <sighs> the best Darlington throwback of 2023, perhaps. It is Ross Chastain's. Yes, your eyes are not tripping, bro. That is UPS. That is actual UPS on this diecast. First time since... What was it? 2014, we've seen UPS in the Cup Series, I believe. I could be mistaken on that one. That was Carl Edwards. And wow, man, the Dale Jarrett machine is back. That is freaking dope. And we're going to keep digging here in our parcel. Again, every die cast you see in this video will be reviewed on the channel. And speaking of which, Jimmy Johnson just announcing he'll be doing some uh, extra races in 2024. I believe it's uh, nine in total. Well, that looks cool. Look at all that. <laughs> that looks cool in the box. Uh, anyways, this is the Club Windham Chevrolet Camaro. I believe this ran at Coda, which was a very forgettable race. And, you know, I don't want to be that guy, but Jimmy Johns is not a road course guy. He is statistically the greatest one-and-a-half-mile driver in history of motorsports. I'm glad he's running a lot of speedways in 2024. This one uh, is Corey LaJoy's, is it Schluter, whatever, I don't know. Uh, anyways, we call it Schluter Systems Camaro from 2023. I still like the 2021, 2020, I think, yeah, the 2021 version of this car a lot more, but I figured, you know what, why not? It's a next-gen car. Uh, let's go ahead and freaking do a diecast review on it. We're strapped for some reviews, man. We've been, we've been bugging, and oh yeah, you know I wasn't going to miss out on this one. Chase freaking Elliott's. Lino Racing Late Model. 
Holy cow, dude, these things are dope. And I think the wheels are a brand new mold as well. They didn't just copy and repaste the uh, the Gen 6 era wheels. Now, these are a brand new, thicker tire, smaller uh, rim, if you will, uh, mold. I, I cannot wait to do a die cast review on these. I'm telling you, the late model scene, I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm not really a late model guy. I don't follow it. I think it's cool and all. I would race it on a video game, but I, I don't follow it. But I tell you what, it is so cool to see all these late model drivers that now can get a 164 scale done of their race car. Whether it's custom or whether it's official, it's really cool to see. And check this out. Who Ross Chastain and the number one 2023 Worldwide Express Una Shippers. Uh, I... I, I I don't come up with the names, fellas. But anyways, it's got a chrome number outlining. That is really, really freaking cool. I can't wait to do a die cast review. We're going to put that one sideways because why not? We're going to do it the other way around. Uh, we're, we're keeping it OG on here. And how about this paint scheme? Now, look, it is supposed to be a Darlington throwback. This was officially Kevin Harvick's final Darlington throwback. Now, it's a great looking paint scheme for the most part. But that in it, it, does that scream Jeff Green AOL? No. But it looks cool. I don't consider it a darling to throw back. I just consider it an interesting paid scheme. Uh, let's go ahead and keep digging here in the box. I mean, I, I got a boatload, of course. This is all from our friends over there at Circle B Diecast, guys. Make sure to use that promo code down below. Help you save on shipping with code Diecast Buffet. Any orders, $30 or more. I tell you what, if you haven't picked up this one, what are you waiting on? This is an awesome Chase Elliott paint scheme. It's very nostalgic. If you remember the Looney Tunes cars of the 2000s, uh, this this screams Jeff Gordon, Richmond, uh, what is it, 2002. It's just so freaking cool. Uh, love to see that uh, very uh, whimsical paint scheme, if you will. This is a, another car that I'm really shocked got made. <laughs> Tyler Reddick has had so many freaking paint schemes in 23. How about this? The Xfinity 10G Toyota Camry. This thing looks dope. I mean, you got a beautiful, like, purple and lavender kind of mixture paint scheme here. Uh, very, very sharp. I did not think this car was going to get made. I figured this was just going to be DMP'd off the rip. I guess Xfinity ponied up the, the moolah to get it produced. And I tell you what, what a awesome looking die cast there. I mean, they even made, I think, two of his Jordan brand cars. So if you like the Kurt Busch Kansas win, guess what? They're making two more Jordan brand cars, apparently. So get ready to get those because they're freaking awesome. And we're going to keep digging here. There is literally so much packing peanuts. I'm trying not to get the studio all dirtied up. We literally just got this thing put together. This car, believe it or not, I have not picked up yet. And uh, as a Chase Elliott fan, I've been slacking. This is Chase Elliott's Atlanta win from 2022. I did not review this one yet, so we're going to make sure uh, we go ahead and get a die cast review on that. Put that in the collection. And let's keep digging here in the parcel. This is officially, ooh, Martin Truex Jr.'s Dover 2023 race win. If you like confetti, oh, this one's fantastic. Look at the roof on this car, man. The front and back windows are absolutely caked in confetti. The silver, the fluorescent orange, the tracker boats livery. I'm telling you, man, this is a fantastic looking paint scheme. If you're a raced win collector, boy, you know you got to get that one. I I'm telling you, the raced win die casts have not never been this good since 2007, 2009. Uh, when they made a few obscure ones, I think they made, like, what is it, Kyle Busch's 08 win in 09. They released it that year. And they actually put, like, confetti on the windshield or the, the 07 raced wins. I'm stalling because I got something really cool I'm going to show you. And the 07 raced wins had confetti on the spoilers, the wings, believe it or not. And speaking of raced wins, I was so tempted to do this review. I was thinking, let's do it. Then I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And I said, I'm going to do it. Kevin Harvick's 2001 Atlanta race to win. Now, I was saying, I'm not going to do a diecast review on it. I'm not going to do it. And I said, you know what? You fans want to see this diecast uh, reviewed. I'm trying to get a better look at it here without bumping my uh, tripod. I said, we're going to do a diecast review on it. Look at this. The most detailed Monte Carlo ever made from the Action Winter Circle line. Not only do you have detailed window bars on the windows, the, the printed detail. That's something the Winter Circle cars never had. 
Uh, you have the front fascia on this car is so much more realistic to the actual car. I'm telling you, man, this is gonna be fantastic. There's a few bugaboos with it that I was I, I was seeing from uh, other people's photos, and obviously it doesn't have the Winston logo. Not gonna have the Budweiser logo. I think they screwed up the right rear tail light. But my point is, it is the most accurate race to win Kevin Harvick car from 2001 you're ever going to get. And uh, we'll keep digging here. Ooh, this one's another forgotten paint scheme. Chase Briscoe, Darlington Throwback 2023. I got to be honest with you, it's so forgotten, I forgot what the heck it was a throwback to. <laughs> Wasn't it uh, like a uh, one of his, like, I don't know, childhood race cars or something? I forget. Uh, I'm going to put that one over there. If you're wondering why we have the, the fish eye camera, it's because uh, the way the tripod system is set up, when we do these big box die cast reviews, I have to put the camera pretty close to the box. And I'll just show it real quick. If I put the camera on, on our normal setting that we do the die cast reviews with, this is what you would see. So this is why we go back to fish eye, and you, you, you get what I'm trying to say. That's why we put it on this, uh, so you can get a nice... View. We got only a couple more die casts in the studio, and this is a very forgotten paint scheme that I'm surprised was not a Darlings and Throwback. Even Mike Joy said it looked like Steve Park's car. It is Joey Logano's Pennzoil Ford Mustang from 2023. This is one of those paint schemes that if they would have just put the Pennzoil logo across the side, this would have been fantastic. It actually has a matte finish to it. Who in their right mind would just put the Penzoil logo here and they literally put nothing on the quarter panel? You can't make this stuff up. So that's uh, that's unfortunate, but I figured, you know what, we're going to do a diecast review on it, and I believe this is the final car. Speaking of Logano, and dude, those updated Penske wheels are amazing. Holy cow. Look at these freaking chrome wheels, guys. This is a brand new uh, wheel color batch. This is not the same ones you saw uh, back in the summertime when they made the Auto Trader car and all that other uh, stuff. This is literally chrome. I, I've been harping and harping and harping that the, the, the Pinsky wheels, they looked like Dookie. This is what they were looking like. Does that look like, which one of these look, look like chrome? I'm just saying, the one on the left looks like concrete. The one on the right is actually freaking chrome. We're going to switch to... Uh, normal die-cast view. I mean, look at the wheels. That is freaking fantastic. Not only do you have the Darlington uh, lettering on there, but you have that metallic chrome look to it. I gotta give them so much props for doing that, for updating the wheels and making them look a million times better. I'll show it once again. This is what they look like. It literally looks like concrete. That is what they're supposed to look like. I cannot give them enough kudos for that. It's about time they fixed it. If they would have do, if they would have done a simple prototype run of that, and anybody who does quality, you know, inspection would have said, "Hey, that doesn't look like a Pinsky car." They would have fixed that. I'm so glad they changed it because these wheels look fantastic. Alrighty, folks, what a incredible diecast freaking haul. I think it's what like 15 cars in the studio. We got the brand new late model mold, which you know I'm gonna go crazy for that. Uh, we got brand new Kevin Harvick raced win from his first ever NASCAR Cup Series win. Then you got Ross Chastain, UPS star to throw back. We got the Atlanta Chase Elliott win, which I didn't have that yet. I'm gonna have to make the Pocono win down the, uh, you know, down the commode eventually. We got this Dover win from Truex, which is beautiful. A random Jimmy Johnson. They fixed the Penske wheels, which look unbelievable. I'm hyped for this, guys. Which one of these die casts y'all want me to review first? You could probably guess we're going to do the late models first. I'm so excited to see these. I'm telling you, they are going to sell like hotcakes. I know a lot of custom makers are going to be wanting them. I tell you what, I can't wait to build something with, with one of them. We have been anticipating uh, anticipating the late model mold for a while. I mean, they, they knocked it out of the park. To put this in perspective for the new fan, this is like when they made the updated truck tooling mold in 2018. For the better part of a, a decade, there wasn't a single 164 truck produced, right? And they finally came out of the woodwork, excluding promos, I might add. Uh, but there was nothing produced. This is, this is a game changer. I cannot wait to do a diecast review, guys. So you know what to do, guys. Make sure to like, comment, 
and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the new diecast reviews we'll be having those on the channel i know i've been slacking y'all i have been slacking on reviews i've been trying to get this studio set up uh the last one i'll, I'll keep it short you can click off the video if you want but if you want to know why we haven't been uploading the last studio was actually too short I'm not talking about the rapper. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> so this studio was about four inches wider. That gives me enough room to be able to do what I got to do. And the last studio had a dome on it. It had a roof. Well, this one don't. So that means I can install my top light, which is up here. And that gave it a lot brighter. If you've seen that Boris Said Diecast review, you would know what I'm talking about. Uh, the, the color was a little bit off. That's why it was a test build. That was the only die cast review we actually filmed in that studio. I only filmed one of them, I think. I could be mistaken on that. Uh, anyways, this is the brand new studio. This is the brand new build. I've been working all day trying to get the lighting, trying to get the picture, trying to get everything I possibly can correct. I've been wanting to do this for the channel for a long freaking time. It is the new era of this channel, and I am so here for it. So uh, that's all for now. We got a buttload of crap to review. Hopefully my voice doesn't blow out by the end of it. Have a blessed one. Diecast Buffet, signing off.